The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this uh, Wednesday, the 22nd of uh, March. Wow, March is almost done. Anyway, here we are looking at the Dow down 12, the S&P down just a little bit. I think it was one. Yeah, down one. Uh, the QQQ, oh, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. I'll come back. QQQ up 11 cents at 310.45. The IWM down uh, 51 cents at 176. Gold is uh, up five and a half at 1946. Silver is holding pretty well. You remember we, we talked about the juggling between the two. So silver is up 16 cents at 22.59. High grade copper had a very strong session yesterday and, and the day before. Today it's up again at 4.02 on the continuous contract, up 0.03. Um, so this is a pattern that I like to look at. I'll just draw it in here. We'll come back to it maybe in a, in a couple of days. You see this channel? And what I do with channels is I like to go to the outside of the wicks. In other words, the very end of each bar. Uh, and I use candlesticks mostly because the information that you garner from the, the actual design of the candlestick itself is really, I fi I'm finding it more and more important. The other thing is it spreads the charts out. If it's just the bar chart, you can get really squashed. And I'm only looking for troughs and peaks as one of the criteria in the trap wave count, the actual count itself. So I could miss that. This way it makes it much easier. And I love to, so in this particular instance, look, high-grade copper, I went to the high of the 18th of January at 4.35. This is a continuous contract. I would have gone and kept the high that was made at um, 4.23, and that was on the 21st of February. But then the very next high was lower than that. So I kind of compromised, and I went to, whoops, I went to the, body of the candle, the wick and the body. So it comes down a little bit. And one of the reasons I did that is I wanted to see if I could draw a channel. The channel is where you get parallel lines. Uh, I haven't put the channel wave inside track repellent zone or propellant zone here at all. I didn't need it. But what I am looking at is if I just draw a parallel, you can see that we match beautifully to the bottom. And that's all I need to see because it's giving me parameters. It's making the the... The contention that lower lows and lower highs is really a down mode and the upper uh, higher highs and higher lows is an up mode. And that's all you want to think of right now. So it's in a sell mode. Um, but in the moment, and you can look at that on balance volume, how much volume has come in on this rally. That's really quite important because um, does it get worn out if you don't get the comparable uh, rally in the technicals? Well, sometimes that happens. So I'm going to draw that in here as well. So this is the weekly, and you can see the weekly has got a, a very ragged cup and handle pattern. But one of my favorite patterns is when I see prices in this particular channel. This one is a little bit whippy. The, the weekly chart looks much better. So this can go a little bit longer, and then don't be surprised if at some point you will suddenly spiral up out of that trend line and then that trend line becomes a support level. So it's resistance, then it becomes a support level. Let's get back to our story here. We're looking at the dollar, DXY, coming down from that peak D in the chapter way, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. That's where you sometimes get your deepest decline. That's what we're seeing here in the dollar. But wait a minute. If you go to the USDJPY, which is the yen or the yen currency pair, here you are. You pull back sharp. You're trying to rally today. Uh, but in the weekly chart, you can see there's an arch formation, a very big pyramid to the upside, then down, went into the Chapman Wave inside track, repellent zone, came down with a measured move uh, to a particular bar that I like to look at, candle, and it made a perfect left side, right side price time match. It's called bar symmetry. Did it once, did it twice, and then it had a good rally. So all I'm saying is that in the weekly chart, 
it's got an arch formation. It has to go into the 139, 140 area within another two weeks. Otherwise, this is kind of stuck. And that corresponds with the dollar action. Wait a minute. If you look at the EUR, USD, you've got the exact opposite. You had this cup formation with a nice price symmetry, went to a peak E and a pullback, but the 9 is still way above the 14, and that says there's internal strength in the euro. The euro made a new low in the daily under the 200 period moving average. This is now a brand new A. If this is an A, and the stochastic is 77%, starts to trade for about 3-4 days, above 80%, I have to consider that this is going to go to peak A, B, C, and D. But wait a minute, how would that relate to gold? Whoops. How would that relate to gold? Well, gold made that peak D that we were talking about earlier on. It's pulled back. But look at the tacticals. The 9 is way above the 14 in the daily. The stochastics is 78%. I prefer 80% or higher. But the MACD is good. The weekly chart... The 9 is over the 14. The MACD is good. Stochastic is a little weak at 53%. And that's telling me that gold is not out of the woods. No, no, no. I should have said it the exact opposite way. <laughs> and that tells me that gold is still in play. And one of the reasons I think it's in play is if you look at the XLF, and I don't care what the Fed says today, there are certain contingencies out there that the, how can I put it, the integrity of some of the banks is going to be tested unless over the coming weeks there isn't a lot more clarification. We just had so far come out today to say under certain conditions, I, I don't know what the conditions are, we'll, I, I, we'll guarantee up to 2 million, 250,000 to 2 million that's, uh, what, eight times more? Uh, uh, this is a very different scenario. Are, are other banks going to be forced to do that? Are they able to do that? How can they do it? Is there some kind of an insurance policy? How can you guarantee that under these terrible circumstances when there's a financial crisis, where do you get the money to be able to pay everyone and guarantee them their $2 million? Or does this take away from the Fed? Or is this something they get, they're going to be encouraged to do because it's going to force other banks by, through competition to go up $1 million, maybe $1.5, there may be $2 million to match? So there's, this is a very complex situation. You can see by the weekly chart of the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund that this big arch formation in the, day, in the weekly chart and the same thing in the monthly is not anything that you can just dismiss by shrugging your shoulders and saying, eh, uh, we'll be okay. I think it's going to be complex and it's going to, it's going to continue this really choppy, choppy action. And we're going to see the same thing that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. And that is certain sectors outperform. And look at the semiconductors. Up today, up 269 at 256.33. This is this is almost a breakout because it, it's in in the uh, weekly chart. You can see this is a a year over a year. Yeah, it's almost a multi-year break to the upside. Not quite a multi-year, but it's a break to the upside and certainly a yearly high. And that's a very as far as I'm concerned with that. That is really important. So I've got questions that came up. I uh, cannot talk about the falling information, that's low highs and much lower lows. I'll talk about all that. The Dow is down 25, S&P is down 3, holding pretty well. We'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, so a couple of things I want you to talk about is this is the first time in, I can't even remember when the last time was. It, it has happened, but not as consistently as I've just seen. I think it goes back to what year what, we what, 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 May of 2022, yeah, somewhere around May of 2022, um, I just had five consecutive sessions of the Richard Arms Trin Gauge in the high level area. Five consecutive, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, what am I talking about? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Okay. Up until two days ago, it was five consecutive sessions. And I uh, didn't get that uh, yesterday. I thought I did, but I didn't. And this is going to be very interesting because every time there's been at least a little bit of a cluster like that, uh, what's happened is uh, there's been a bit of a rally, then a pullback, and then a very sharp rally. But when the trend is like in May of last year down, that doesn't very mean very much. But I'm just watching because it tells you that the speed with which we got overbought in the volatility index, that's Richard Arms volatility index, I only use the numbers. The particular numbers I look at, if it's if over a certain level, um, and out of all the technical indicators I have, this is the only one I've never disclosed the numbers. Some people have figured it out. I don't disclose the numbers only because I think it's going to change at some point. I don't want to lock into this and then at some point it changes and people are still thinking it's the old one. So I just say when it's high. It's the first time in a long time that the selling pressure was so high every day. And look how we turned around to go to the upside afterwards that you had five consecutive sessions. And that just tells me that in some ways you can see that the market is – if, if it wasn't for this news with the Fed coming out today, I'd be looking at this and saying, oh, I'm really impressed. I, I, I was happy because we always along the Dow or short the Dow, whatever it is, but we, we trade the Dow. I was happy when the Dow was the leader for months and months. And then things changed. But I'm actually happier now that the QQQ and the SMHs are leading because to me, that's just up until today. Maybe it changes tomorrow because that's telling me that there are buyers out there that are just ignoring any of the bad news. And they're saying, I see value 
because you would under these conditions you, you, most money managers would look at certainly the beaten down tech stocks now just initially for them as value as well as high beta but tech stocks so the, the two don't necessarily go together high beta and and value but sometimes they do and i think that that's what they that it must be otherwise why would you be so high at 161 back in august you're now at 256 almost 100 points higher that's that is really something so to smash this down you'd have to start uh, seeing the um, the smhs would have to crush under 2 230 under the 228 200 period moving average it can happen but so far I'm seeing buying, and I like that. Question came in about, oh, so the falling axe. Let me just show you what this is. So in my techniques, my myriad techniques that I've developed over the years, or maybe one or two kind of overlap, but a lot of them are really original. I'm not, I'm not very good at copying people because I don't usually remember all the details the way I should. So I have to do it myself. I've been like that all my life. So this is a pattern that I look at. So let me just click on this, and I'll show you right here. Ah, uh, this is the upside down one. I don't want that. I want the regular. There it is. So there's a pattern I discovered years ago that sometimes after a big move up, usually at a peak D, E, or F, it doesn't have to be that, but that's kind of where I start to see them. You'll see the pattern that you're following start to make lower highs and much lower lows. Then all of a sudden, it finds some support. And in that support, if there is a V or a cup shape formation forming is usually more like a V, but I, I, I like to draw the cup to show that uh, there's a certain motion we're looking at going to the upside. If it takes out the declining trend line, you can get a one to one to the upside. And then all you do is once it breaks that, you start looking to the left side to see what's the next peak on the left side that could be the next resistance to, to tackle. And that's and you go all the way to the top. So a very simple technique. It can also work upside down like this. It's the same thing. I just turned the slide upside down. And we've seen that in the gold contract. It's a couple of contracts that keep doing it all the time. They make them. It turns into a dreaded H pattern, except the difference is that when it's like this, it invariably goes to a peak C, a D, or even an E, and then turns down. And the higher up you go in the, in the alphabet, in the Chapman Wave methodology, on, in this particular pattern, the greater the chances are that you won't take out the low, or if you do, it'll be very brief. But you've got a stop gap. You've got something that says, hey, I'm going to hold you right there. Um, that's different to failing at a peak A or peak B. Look, failed at a peak A. Dreaded H pattern, went to a low low, failed at a peak A, went to a low low, failed at a peak A, failed at a peak A, failed at a peak A, and it went to peak A, B, this time it's gone to a C. And I have to tell you, if, I, if it wasn't for the Fed, if it wasn't for this whole, if I can compartmentalize, right now I'd be saying, wow, I love the action. This is the way takeoff moves uh, occur. Uh, you see the V-shaped pattern in the in the on-balance volume. You see the stochastic start to rally from under 20% to now 56%. The MACD crosses positive. You haven't yet got the line period over the 14. Today's probably the day that either it's, it breaks down and deflects lower or it actually crosses higher. Um, and you're about to tackle the inside track repellent zone in the falling axe formation. That's the, the cone for expanding cone, declining, expanding cone formation, too many words. Um, and that says that if by next week we are trading in the S&P somewhere around 434, 438, wow, that's good. Except if it's only in a peak, it's in a leg D, I, I'm always getting nervous about seeing a big move to the upside in a whatever symbol you're looking at underneath the previous high. And it's already gotten to a D. I like big, strong moves. So it says, yeah, it is great, but a lot more work needs to be done. However, <clears throat> looking at looking at this 200-period uh, moving average, that's been the magnet. It's been up and down and up and down. It keeps coming back to the 4,005 level. And here we are at 4,006. So there's a lot going on. Here's the falling axe formation plus the expanding. This is the inside track. Propellant zone in the S&P. Look at that nice candle so far this week. Still green, nine-period moving average. I have to tell you, if it wasn't for the Fed, I would have just gone gung-ho bullish. Well, we are bullish the Dow. We, we long the Dow, aggressively long the Dow. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so with that said, I covered that. 
Uh, PXD, PXD, uh, isn't that, that's an oil, there we go. Uh, Pioneer Natural Resources, pulling back a little bit today, down 250 at 192.84. So the very interesting thing here is, if I had to do a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, we've already expanded lower than that in the monthly chart, as well as you can see here in the weekly chart. But more importantly, you see this candle here, this doji candle from December of 2021, high is 188, low is 166. I'm forgetting this, the, the digits. Um, that says to me, that's gonna be a really important support. We've already gone to uh, a low of, of 177.27. So um, in that context, we've been to the middle of the scandal. Now try, I'll talk about it when we get back. Dow is actually up 10, s is up 4. I have to tell you something. Who would have thought that there's a Fed speak this afternoon? But there if is. you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the gold report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Ted Edition. So I just wanted to show you this. I used to have this noted. This is Trimble. I'm going to come back to PXD in a moment. But here's Trimble. Well, what, I don't even know what Trimble does. I see the sign all the time. Trimble Navigation. Limited Navigation. Yeah. Well, I don't know what they do. I was going to look it up, but then I thought, okay. Look, here's the chart. What do I do? I treat this as the fulcrum right there, right there. And then what I do is I look at the left side. I'm over here, and I'm saying, okay, where would I consider this arch formation to come back to? And what I do is I like to go to the cluster formation on the left. So I would go... Uh, I'd go up here, but let's just say I've already seen it. Is it broken that? Where's the next level? I'd go right up Grand Canyon. I go all the way to the to the left side. I bump into that, and I want to give it time. So I make that. It could be there, 
But I'm saying I, I want to go to where it really stops dead, which is that bar there. You can use that, but you'll find that if you can go to the, the I call it the Grand Canyon cliff face right there, that's much better. Then I do this. I just, uh, this is my, my um, trade station um, technology allows that. And then I just do that. But you don't have to have the rectangle, anything. I'm lucky I get, I've got it. It means I can change color, green going up, red going down, or pink going down. And now there's a beautiful arch formation. Have I even a clue that it's going to touch that? I have no clue. But what I like to do is I go to the left side, a particular candle. I could go there and draw a straight, uh, draw my diagonal down like this, uh, this particular peak on the left side, and and go to a line like that. And look, it's it's beautiful. But I actually like to do it in. I like to conform to what I think <clears throat> is the right side time value that I'm looking at here, and that says <clears throat> probably. And this is my eye. This you couldn't, and no computer's going to pick it out for you. I do it by eye, and I say, okay, I'm going to go all the way down here, and what will I, I do? I'll just extend it. Now, for this, I'm going to extend it to the right. I don't like those extensions because they stay there, and in this particular case, I don't want it to extend to the right. Okay. So what do I do? I then move to the right. This is now much as I do in, in my, the futures that I'm trading or looking at all day, and look what happens. I have no idea if it's going to work. Oh, and the other thing is, because I wouldn't have had all the the price points, I put in an X. These days I've been trying to put the X in to say, that's where that's the, that's my target. All right? Could miss it. Doesn't matter. It looks terribly embarrassing when you miss it. and um, But then when you look at it closely, you say, wait a minute, I only missed it by uh, in a couple of bars. And you're going back uh, a year, over a year. So look at this. So that says to me, <clears throat> oh, I didn't do this. I meant to make it go down to the bottom. I would have been down there. I don't know why I did that. It should have been there. Okay, this is where I'm looking at. Okay, so my X would have been right there. Okay, so hey, that's not bad. It went to the low was uh, 49, 99, it's called 50. And the low that I was looking for was... Uh, 47.19. Well, anywhere from, yeah, from 50 to 47.19. So this is, I love to do that. And then I would have drawn in the arch formation on the upside. <clears throat> yeah, I would have put it into there. And look, it gives you a really good reading on what's going on. All right, I thought I'd do that. So my, my answer to the question on Trimble is <clears throat> the, the pink is underneath the four, is, is, is the pink nine is under the 14, that's a, a negative. The price is trying to form a base, but it keeps making a slightly lower low. The MACD is weak, the stochastic's very weak at 90%. The on balance volume is actually not too bad. So it says that this whole basing area is really important, and if at any point it's at 50.06 right now, if it was to slip under 47, close under 46, this is a weekly chart, if it did that on a daily basis, I would just say, be really careful. There's no strength here that has been able to garner sustained move to the upside. In fact, if it keeps failing at a peak A. Look, a peak A, a peak A, a peak A. So just be really careful. All right, so that's Trimble, TRMB. TRMB. Uh, next, Kim. <clears throat> oh, you're short. Uh, I'm short May 50 and 55 puts. Long the calls. Oh, okay. So, all right. So, if you don't get 50, 50 55. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how you're going to actually. You see, it, it's going to be stuck in a range for a little bit now. So, in a sense, it depends on what, what month you are. Oh, May. You said May. Okay, that's fine. Okay, you've got until May. So I, I think you're going to be. This is going to be a good trade for you. The big resistance here is in the 51s, 51 to 52. If it if it closes over 52, expect that it's going to go a little higher because the MACD did cross positive and the stochastic is rallying. Um, but most importantly, that weekly chart says it's really struggling to hold rallies, and that's all I can say to you that it's struggling, and that if it does close under 47. 
and the 46 becomes really important. All right, next question. Oh, so PXD. Uh, let's see. Uh, Trimble provides technology solutions that enable professionals and field mobile workers to enhance or transform, the, transform their work processes worldwide. Wow, I read that so often in so many companies. Uh, it's a little, it's, uh, well, well, a lot of people are doing, but it hasn't been working too well for them. So the question was, could I show PXD? I want you to do just a little bit else. Could, Yes, yes. Oh, so the Trimble, yes, it did. It did weather the storm. And that's why I'm saying this particular move right now, the MACD um, is just cross positive with that nine to go over the 14. We'd have to get it to 5170. So I think in a way that it's acting OK, but OK is not good enough because it's done that many times before and then failed. This is the first time that you've got the MACD crossing positive since it went negative way back in February, and it was up in the almost 60 area. So yeah, this is a big difference. Okay, um, FXP, where did it go? Um, <clears throat> could you show uh, 1010? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember, was it PXD, right? It was PXD, PXD, PXD. Yes, there it is. So almost the same pattern. Isn't it interesting? Look, it fails at a peak A to B, B minus at the 200 period moving average. Then it goes to peak A and it fails. Then it goes to peak A and it fails. Yeah, it's gone to peak A, <clears throat> then gapped up. And now it's in a leg B struggling. So this is Pioneer Natural Resources. Um, so what I want you to do is to just open this up a little bit and show you it's the same story. I would do this. <clears throat> I'd bump up against, I don't even have to bump up. I can just go to this particular candle right here. So I would do this. I'd go from here to this low, even though it looks like, wow, you've got a lot of time. I would do that. Mm, yes, I would do that. No, I'm, I'm going to do it my usual way. I like to bump into the left side low all the way there. And then I would take this particular, I'm very comfortable with this particular pattern right there. That doji candle, I move it to the right like this. And there you are. That's what I'd be looking at. And that says, by the week of the 21st of April, uh, there's a chance that it's going to test the paper break 166.97. Whoa, 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 whoa. I better do this again. That's a lot. That's 30 points from where we are right now. I'll be back in a moment. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So, a couple of things. So, PXC, I'm just going to put this X in right here. Um, the, the stochastic is at 15% in the weekly chart. Remember, over 80%, I said, that's what you want. If you're bullish, let it stay over 80%. That's fantastic. Under 20%, as long as it stays here, that says, oh, you've got to be a little bit careful. So it has held this beautiful support line at, at around about 178, and now it's, it's popped up a little bit this week. But I'm suspecting that uh, it's going to be uh, tough going, and that's uh, I'll repeat what I said before. If it breaks... At this particular point, if it closes under 182 to 179, that's kind of support area. On a weekly basis, there's a good chance it's going to come down there. So I've got this going all the way to, um, I don't know if we get to the 166. I'm just saying this is the way I've drawn it in. It says by April, the week of the 21st of April. Now I want you to show you something else. So I didn't realize, so Trimble, because I now I remember I, there were a couple of stocks that I looked at and they were in this whole navigation thing. And I can't remember, I had a, a screamer, a, a low cap, a low price stock that was also in the same thing they did. Look, this does mobility solutions comprising route management, safety and compliance, end to end vehicle management, video intelligence and supply chain communications. So all of that sounds fantastic. So I'm not sure why it's dropped like this. But it's right in the sweet spot of what is needed, especially if we start to see PAVE, which is uh, the ETF for the infrastructure, start to come back and it did gap up. And a lot of these stocks gapped up and have held for two days now. I don't know if they're going to hold there, but I would put them all together that if, if PAVE starts to move back up again, this is the infrastructure, there's a chance that Trimble should, be, should improve. But I, I now remember it. Um, but there was another stock that also had the same litany of, of things that they did within the organization of uh, automotive, agriculture, all sorts of things like that. So it sounds like a great area, but it hasn't been working. All right, now a couple of things I wanted to do. I had a question about um, NEO yesterday, and I didn't get to it. Now I can't remember what they... Yes, NEO is rallying some. This is NEO Chinese cars, electric cars, vehicles. Um, wow, that monthly chart is just horrible. The weekly chart just had an arch formation, and this is a nice candle after a doji candle low. I don't know if this is the place to be, but on a very short-term basis, it's it's running. It's up uh, $0.08 cents today at 9.35. If it's able to close above uh, 970 on a weekly basis, that's going to be the first time that it's closed above the pink nine-period moving average for over a month. And that's going to be important because 1022 will be the next level of resistance. If at any stage it has one slide underneath 880, I would just say uh, uh, not ready for prime time at all. So talking about prime time, um, I said I would do this word of word. I wrote it down now. Oh, can I look at the VIX index? Yes. I was going to do that, but now I just got asked for it. So the VIX index went to 30.81, and it's now to 20.28. With the Fed about to do something that we don't know, it could be, it could be almost nothing to the point that the market says, Phew, we can continue rallying. 
some every once in a while, for those of you who ever followed, I remember I used to do this oh, decades ago. We, I used to follow M1, that's money supply. Then I followed M2. And then I would, then they never discussed M3, which I think is really important. Hardly ever gets discussed. That's the actual total money flow. And, um, and it was on Thursday, and I remember the market would wait, and then you know, it would come out, and then Mark would do what he was going to do. And so I, all I can say is that the VIX index is important, but it is really responsive to things. So in this particular instance, it's telling us, and once again, if it wasn't, if the, VIX, if the Fed wasn't announcing anything today, I'd look at this and say, wow, under the 200 period moving average of 23.06 on the daily chart at 20.29, back at the lows, look at the month, look at the weekly chart, got repelled to the Chapman Wave inside track, a repellent zone. Now it's got the, uh, many times it's broken the support level. So it's in an area here that says at 20.31, it would take at least a spike into the 25 to 26 area to see this market drop down 800 points, S&P, you know, the equivalent of maybe 120 points or something like that. I, that's what it would take. It would actually be, it would have to be sustained, in fact. So all I can say is if it wasn't for the Fed talking today, a lot of the action that I'm looking at has been very positive. I kind of like what I'm seeing. I, I don't like the fact that we've missed by pennies some stocks that I wanted. Um, that's more my problem. But the fact that I'm actually missing them because things are moving so quickly that you like and you want to get, um, I like that aspect. So <clears throat> what the Fed does, I'll talk about that in, in the last little segment that we wrap up. So at 20.34, it's saying, it doesn't look like fund managers are afraid. So this could come out of just from nowhere. The Fed could say uh, a quarter point, but we're not afraid to go to 50 if, if, if things continue because we've just had, like, what was it, the home builders? Uh, what is, uh, let me just see, Toll Brothers, let me just check that out. Uh, Toll Brothers is holding, but it's not breaking down. The HGX, which is the uh, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, um, I'll be there, in fact, uh, one of the, uh, very soon. Um, it's trading at, uh, well, where did that come from? What is that over there? God, I hit these buttons and they do all sorts of things. Holding very steady, not breaking down, but not breaking out. So it's 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 waiting for the Fed, like us. Look, there's the Philadelphia housing sector in it. The nine hasn't crossed positive yet. But it didn't even get down to the 200 period moving average of 418. It's trading at 437. There are pockets of strength here, and this rotational pockets of strength is, is actually quite important. So all I'm saying is that the VIX index, at, as we speak right now, is saying, ho hum, this afternoon at 245, if it's up in the 23s, it's at 20.39 right now. I don't know if it'll move that quickly in one day. Well, it did that yesterday. So if it's up in the 23s and holding, and the Dow's down 275, the S&P's down, I would say, 48 to 53 after 3 o'clock, then, then I'm saying, oh, okay. But actually, I'm wanting a dip right now. I would love to see a slide in the market. There are, there are stocks and and. and, and sectors that I want my subscribers to get into. <clears throat> They're very attractive looking. So we'll see what happens here. Is this one of those things is beware for what you want, right? I don't know. All I can say is that uh, what, what is going on at this particular point right at this moment, a uh, question about CX, that's one of those that's always on our list. This is CX cement company this is cmax south africa uh, sa sa what was you because i'm from south africa i always think sa south africa it's sa south america i guess the mexico uh, southern part uh mexican cement company um yeah we're moving up today up uh 107 and 508 how did that get in there what is that all right i'll figure that out. so in the meantime back at the ranch uh, we'll see what happens by the end of the day. I, I can only tell you, I like what I see. I might not like it at uh, 3.45 this afternoon, but right now, I like what I see.
Um, yeah, some cells were elevated. Medium TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So folks, I want to talk about a long, narrow rectangle formation. And what happens is sometimes, what ha what, most of the time, it goes, especially if it's at the top of a move, it goes, goes, goes. It's like uh, uh, it's a rotation, uh, kind of selling distribution and then it, it goes below and then sometimes it goes back into the rectangle because it just hasn't said goodbye to the friends because it came down so quickly so what we've done now is we've gone to a peak d in the 10 minute e mini chart all i can say is this within the context of what we're looking at this is a little nerve-wracking because it's kind of too benign the markets say oh ho hum I don't like ho hum at all. I, I I've I've um, I've you know I I'm the right there waiting for for an accident to happen. But at the same time, it is impressive that some things have moved. So let me make it as clear as I can. If at any point, this is at two o'clock, the announcing, I think the market's going to move quite quickly. I don't think it's going to just wait for the for the announcement. And we don't know what it's going to say spe specifically, but it could be quite complex actually. If it becomes complex, this is what we're looking at. To have a, once in a while, I was going to say earlier on, the, the Fed, the market moves before the Fed speak and actually continues in that same upward direction, just once in a while. But that this could be a change of trend and we're going to watch it closely. So we're at 40.41 in the E-mini right now. We're at 4,008 in the uh, cash S&P. If at any point after the news is, is made, 
there is a sharp move up. And that sharp move is able to hold all the way. And let's say the Dow is up 160 points. Let's just say it holds to a plus 40 all the way through two from 2 o'clock to 2.45. That'll be good. Wow. If it pulls back and the E-mini, which is at 40.42, is suddenly down below 4,000 and holding, I think that this market will take a breather. But then we get to see whether or not there's a snapback within a day or two as the market assesses it. That's kind of my thinking if there is a sharp move down. But let's see what happens. Just be a little bit.